Welcome back. Today I'm making up some nukes and I'll be going through what I'm doing, why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it. So I hope you enjoy the video. So the nuke I'm going to take isn't a very big nuke. Um, the reason being is we've got our summer flow about to start in three weeks. So I know that I want to leave the majority of my nurse bees in place, but they can afford to miss a few. And we've had a, such a lot of swarming this spring. Um, these bees are really flying quite well. Such a lot of swarming this spring that um, I want to make sure that I don't take too much from the colony and take too much of that resource. Because I need those bees to perform well and bring in that summer honey. Because don't forget after that, between the month of, of mid-July and mid-August, after our flow's finished, I go in, we harvest the honey, I make other splits. So um, that's when we do our main splits. So that's when we can afford to take a bigger amount of bees because we know that the, the, the bees job is done for the year. And what we can do then is feed the, the colony afterwards to make up the resources we've taken from it. There's plenty of resources in the colonies right now. So I'm only gonna take a little bit, but I won't have to feed these colonies because I said the flow starting in three weeks. But by only taking a small nuke, what I'm getting at is you don't have to worry about feeding them this time of year. You feed the nukes because they're gonna be hungry quickly, but you don't have to feed the main colonies and they're not gonna miss that small amount of bees. But the bees I'm making, the nucleus colonies I'm making have got time to grow. They've got time to get away, they've got that full time. Whereas the bigger nukes we make, at the, end of the, at the end of the nectar flow in July, that's the ones we have to give a bit more resources to. But it doesn't matter because the, because the main colonies are finished with those resources. So it's all about looking at what you have in your individual place. Where you are yourself, you might be completely different. You might have a continuous flow going on. And, I, and I've got supers on these colonies because basically there's so many bees in them that I can't afford, I can't afford to compact them any down. I've de decompressed them, I've removed the honey. Now they're flying around quite a lot at the moment. They're flying around and they're looking for food, but there's not much about, there's only pollen. So um, I'll get kitted up because I'm not a hero. I don't do things without all the proper protection. These bees aren't aggressive. They're just inquisitive. They're searching, they're looking for food and there's not much about. So I obviously smell nice, but anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how I make this nuke up and it's pretty simple stuff, but it's the way a lot of people do it. I've got queens in the incubator that I've made last week. They're all coming out. In the next three to five days, I've got four, five batches of grafts coming out, so I've got plenty of queens to put in. So um, I'll be doing that. Anyway, let's get kitted up. First of all, I just wanted to get my nuke ready and show you what the nukes I'm using. You might have seen me mention about these poly nukes I, I use. These are the Dadont six framed poly nukes, okay? We buy from Stair, S T E R H, I believe, okay? This is our frame cover we have, and inside I've got four. Frames of foundation two, and two partitions, okay? So the two partitions will stay in the box this time and I'm gonna take out two to three frames of bees and brood depending on the strength of this colony I'm gonna make this nuke from. I actually foam up the front and I wanted to talk to you about this because I believe foam is brilliant. You don't have to alter your front door, which on these nukes you've got to really sometimes, you can use Vaseline, but then they become loose. If you use foam, you put it in the front, you just do that, and that's a complete seal. The bees cannot get out, because this is ventilated at the base. Now what I will do, you've got to be careful here, because it's summer. Now, you don't want to take too big a nuke, for the other reason is that if this, for instance, gets too hot, your bees will die. You've got to have ventilation, and when you put them down on the grass, you can't put them on the grass, you need to put them on a pallet or something, because if you don't put them on a pallet, the air that they fan inside cannot circulate you are blocking that front off but for me here i can't move these anywhere else i could do but i want to make them i want to make these here because i've got all my genetics here all these drones that are flying around right now literally as we speak you can hear them they are the genetics i want and that's fantastic because i remember i've augmented my drone population here and i've got hundreds of drones in every colony which is what i wanted to get great nukes and really good mating so i want those drones mating with these nukes in about probably less than a week so weather's good now let's get on with it I've tilted this camera right down so you can see right on top of the box and when I start this. Okay, so 
This is my configuration. My have, I have, uh, we have these sheets of cardboard. They're like a stiff card that we get from our supermarket, okay? And we use them on many things, okay? It's basically a, a form of frame cover, but it, it also puts weight on things. When you've just got your, your aluminum top, we, um, we use those on, but this is part of the configuration we have. So I'm not gonna look in the super. I know it's empty. It's just the space for the, for the moment. So I'm gonna crack the super. So I'm just having a little look at this colony now. I can see straight away that on these first three frames, it's packed full of honey. The last three frames is packed full of honey. The brood nest is nice and empty, okay? It's getting a little bit of smoke, not because these bees are aggressive, just to clear them off the top. So we've got the classic problem here where the number one frame has been built against to where you've got a really big honey frame on number two so you can't quite get them out but we see so let's have a look at this third frame there's the brood nest where the brood nest starts nice frames of brood i see eggs straight away right i know this colony has a laying queen that's what i want to see now when you're against the clock and when you're trying to make quick nukes that will be my first frame straight away there's no point in messing around I know this queen is marked. There's a nice frame of bees and brood. There's eggs and larvae in the top. There's probably nurse bees on that. This is what I'm looking for. I don't want to set, I don't want a frame of drone brood, but I want a frame that's got lots of worker brood that's gonna hatch. So that's my first frame. You see, this is all the stores we've got here. A little bit of honey there, a little bit of honey there. Something you've got to be well aware of. So my two frames come out of here. In goes the first one. Check for the queen again. She isn't on that frame. Second frame of bees and brood. Lots of bees. Lots of larvae. A little bit of drone on one corner, but that's fine. Notice how these bees are really stingy and fighting and bit biting and spitting and horrible. Not. Every one of those cells is full of larvae. So that's a nice frame that is. That can be my second frame. Because if my queen fails, because I know that if I put in this frame and my first queen fails, the brood that's hatching will be lingering for a while. And what that does, it helps hold the bees over till there's a second queen on the scene that I can put in. So it'll give me time before they become laying workers because the presence of brood suppresses laying workers. Okay, so the queen isn't on here. Double check, in that one goes. And notice the big thing is here, I'm not rushing to close this box up. I want the bees that are flying to fly. I want them to fly off. I want them to do their thing. And then any, well, the majority of the foraging bees stay with this colony. So there'll be nurse bees on this frame. I'm gonna shake and a few extra in, and that's the nuke made. And what flies back out will stay there. This is a lot of eggs and larvae in this colony again, and some cat brood in the middle. But this frame has more provisions. It's a better frame, but the other one will do. I've got feeders to go on these as well. Every cell has an egg in. Beautiful. A nicely provisioned frame there. I'm just checking for the queen. I just, it's just so much easier to just spend a few extra seconds checking. You can make a lot of nukes in a day even by checking your frames and taking a bit of time because if you're organized, that's where you make up. That's where you make lots of nukes still. So I'll shake these nurse bees off here and what flies up in the air comes back to the box. There you go, plenty of bees in that colony now. That's my nuke done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this brood nest across a bit so that I can put a frame. I'm not gonna break the broodness up this time. 
You can do this time of year because it's warm now. The nights are finally slightly warmer. Full of eggs. I actually just felt the weight of the super as well. And this colony has plenty of resources, so I'm not going to feed it. The problem is also I have a, I have a, um, I have a, uh, a super on, and I don't really want to have to take the super off to put more resources in. You see, there's our queen. This is a Kel Brandstrup, Mark's queen. There, she's a blue and red. She's absolutely gorgeous. Don't know if you can see that. You can see the prolificness of these colonies. It looks like this queen's actually had some injury on it, but I don't know. She still seems to be laying fine, so, but I'm not gonna bother, there's nothing I can do about it, but. Anyway, she looks beautiful, huge abdomen. She's not ready to swarm, everything's great. So she's gone down there, keep her back over the box. She's in that corner, she can go back in. I'm, I'm, not, breaking up, I'm not breaking up this brood nest, I'm, moving the frames apart so I can get that replacement two frames in without causing any issues. I'll just check this frame. That's just honey, so that's been recently drawn up, that one, you see? So these were a little bit slow in getting going, this particular colony, but not every queen is perfect, but it's performing beautifully now. But the whole idea is we've got these for a bank of drones. So there's my nuke, you can see. The um, nuke is looking nice, it's full of bees. The ones that needed to fire off have flown off. I can put the lid on this now. On goes the plastic lid. And I can feed through here tomorrow. That then is the nuke made. I'll put that in the shade for a couple of days, out the way of anything, and I'll put a feeder on it straight away just to make sure they've got food. Nice lot of bees in there. And I'm gonna put this one, one more over and I can put my two new frames, replacement frames, into there. Now, if we really do have a hard time, I might well consider feeding this colony, but the problem is, that, as I say, I've got a super on that's got some nectar in, quite a lot of nectar, because I felt that super. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, the, put it all back together now, and I'm gonna come and assess it in a couple of days. But there's a lot, there's probably eight, 10 kilos of nectar in that super. And I'll show you here, you can see it. There's a lot of loose nectar there, so that's movable nectar. I don't know if you can see that in the light. That's what you need to assess if you've got a colony you're making a summer split from. Have they got food? And if you take food from them, are you leaving them with enough? Because we have a flow in three weeks, but, but is it enough to sustain them? And this is easily enough, because I know that we had a really strong spring flow, and I know that these bees have got plenty of food. And they'll probably take most of that down, and they'll use, because there's a lot of wax builders in these colonies right now, they'll use that in there, to rebuild those two frames. And if I see those built and they're laid up, I've got nothing to worry about because I can take more frames out the middle for my summer split and move them in. And that in turn is how I change my frames. You don't need any of this Bailey comb change stuff, okay? If you're regularly making splits and being sustainable, making your own nukes from your own bees, that's how you do it. Because you don't need to change your frames very often. Because you naturally do it. You naturally change your frames by, by rotation. That's our split done. The bees aren't stressed. End of. Now I warn you, these lids, I bought these in a job lot. I bought a hundred of these because I got a deal with a hive, a hive body, a, um, a base, a hive base and a lid became part of the deal. But the problem is you've got to have insulation in the summer because if you don't have insulation between the top of the roof and the top of the hive, it actually gets too hot and it can cook your bees. So beware of that if you've got metal lids. But they're fine, they, work, they do the job. They keep the, the, colony, uh, keep the colony dry. So, that is how I make my nukes, and uh, have a go, dead easy. It's you need today, to, I, if I get my timing right, I can have a queen cellar in two days, and then that'll hatch out, and I'll have, a, I'll have a laying queen in that nuke within a week. That's what it's all about. That's what being efficiency is all about, and that's what learning how to make nukes is. You can just knock out nukes so easy like this. It's just the easiest thing in the world. So that's that nuke uh, all put together. It's pretty easy stuff, it's not rocket science. Obviously I understand there is the issue with people not having their own queens, but that is why you should learn to raise your own queens. But I do reiterate, learn how to keep bees first, because there's so many people that 
uh, with the greatest respect, are trying to raise queens after having one, two, or maybe three years beekeeping and not much beekeeping experience in those three years. And to be honest, they don't have the resources and they end up wasting a lot of resources and getting very frustrated. To raise queens, you need a lot of resources and you need the experience. That doesn't mean then it's not worth having a go, but go to someone who's got the resources and learn from them before you have a go yourself. I mean, like I do, look at videos, look at books. There's hundreds of methods out there, but you can do it, but just be sensible in the way you do it. The other thing I wanted to mention is, um, I'm getting a lot of emails, a lot of texts at the moment by people who just want to make contact and it's lovely and I really respect that and it's really nice you make the effort, but I'm, please don't take it the wrong way. I'm just so busy right now. I cannot literally answer everybody. I get the phone going, I've got my kids to sort out, I've got bees coming out of my ears, we're doing 70, 80 hour weeks, and I'm not just talking about coming home and, oh, that's it for the day. When you're a beekeeper in the summer, it's just non-stop. You get your honey harvest in, but then you're on to the next thing. You think, oh, great, I can relax, let's have a holiday. No way, it's all kicking off. There's, I've got a load of nukes here now as well, they've all got to be checked. I've got nukes, as you know, I'm making, split, making splits. There's just a lot to do. So please don't take it the wrong way. I will answer your emails when I can, but there's just so much to do. And that's unfortunately the life of a beekeeper. You, you have to realize that it's just full on. Everybody is in the same boat this time of year. So I hope you enjoy the video. I'm off to make more nukes. Uh, and then I'm going back in the apiaries next week, as I said before. But uh, enjoy yourself, have fun with your bees. Take care, bye-bye.